In this video, we're gonna dive headfirst into Redis persistence mechanisms, understand how they work, what their differences are, and which one is the best for us. So let's check it out. If you watched my video on 10 things I didn't know about Redis from a message broker to a graph database and already have your own server running locally, as explained in my other video how to run Redis locally in a Docker container and manage it with Redis Insight and Redis command line interface, you are ready to enable Redis to persist its data in the disk. My name is Rafael Delio, I'm a software developer and in this series of videos I am documenting my journey in learning Redis. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and slap that like button down below. Redis has two mechanisms to persist its data. Let's go through each one of them, understand how they work, what their differences are and what their advantages and disadvantages are and which one is the best one for us. But before we get started, since this video is a continuation of a series where I am documenting my journey with Redis, let's start from where we finished our last video and understand how we can enable persistence from Docker. If you're not running Redis from a Docker container, you can skip this part of the video. Enabling persistence from Docker. Docker containers are ephemeral by default, which means that you lose all your data if you restart your container. Okay, so in order to enable persistence for your container, you need to configure a volume. And to do it, the first thing you're going to do is create a local directory. I created mine at the temp folder, temp, and then local redis. And then inside this one, I'm going to create another one, which I'm going to call data, right? So inside this folder, I have data and I have, and, th and that's all I have actually, and th th this directory, right? And as you remember, this is the command that we ran together in my previous video, where I showed you how to start Redis in a local Docker container. And we're gonna edit this a little bit, right? So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna add this option as well. So you can see that, and we're telling Docker that we're gonna mount this volume using this local directory and this directory within the container. Right, so let's add this option to our docker run command. I'm going to add it here after the ports. And after that, there's something else that I also want to do because you're going to need to do it, which is also adding the Redis configuration file to our container. I already have a sample here, redis.conf. I'm going to copy this redis.conf to my new directory temp local redis and you can see that it's here now let's do a cat on it this is a sample file i'm gonna leave in the description down below the link to have access to it so you can download it in your computer as well but that's what we have inside all the default configurations of redis and we're gonna use it during the video that's why we're already doing this right now and then we're also gonna mount this file here that I just created in, in this local directory into the root of the container, right? So we're also going to add this option here. Okay, nice. And then I'm going to copy this command and run it. All right, so we can see that it's now running. If you click here, we can check the logs. And then if you click on inspect, we can also see that it mounted this local paths into this paths of the container. And that's it. We now have persistence in our Docker container and let's continue with our content. Now that we have our Docker container working as we expect, let's go through the content you all have been waiting for. Redis Database Redis Database, or RDB, is a mechanism of persistence in which the database will persist the data into the disk as snapshots. If the server instance goes down, the snapshots can then be used to restore your previous database state. The interval in which the snapshots are taken can be configured. For example, you can configure a database to take a snapshot every one minute if 10 changes have happened in the dataset, or every five minutes if 1000 changes have happened in the dataset. How it works The snapshots work like a time machine. You can take as many snapshots as you wish, as frequently as you wish, and keep them for as long as you wish. Then, you can use these snapshots to restore the database to any point in time in case of disasters. By default, Redis stores these snapshots in a binary file named dump.rdb, and this RDB file is replaced whenever a new snapshot is created. 
Redis takes snapshots by forking its process into a parent and a child process. Then the child process starts writing a new RDB file, and when it's done writing the new RDB file, it replaces the old one. Advantages RDB doesn't impact the performance of the server. Since the main process only has to fork its process and the child process will take care of all the writing in the disk, the performance of the parent process is preserved. However, forking may cause a performance decrease. Restarting the database is faster. RDB is faster when restoring large datasets in comparison to AOF, which is another mechanism of persistence we'll cover later in this video. Compact Backup Files the content of the dump file is very compact and can be transferred to other storage, such as Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3. Disadvantages You can lose minutes of data. Although you can configure your database to take snapshots from time to time, the minimum you would like to set is 5 minutes. That's because when the data is relatively large or the CPU performance is not great, the fork operation may be time-consuming, which can lead Redis to stop serving clients from a millisecond to a second. Working with RDB To take a snapshot, you can either configure Redis to automatically take a snapshot every any minutes or M changes in the dataset, or take a manual snapshot yourself. Before we put our hands in the fire, let's go through the second mechanism of persistence of Redis, AOF. A pen-only file is another mechanism of persistence that will log every write operation received by the server. These logs can then be replayed at server startup and reconstruct the original dataset. The commands are logged using the same format as the Redis protocol. How it works When Redis finishes executing a write command, it will append the command at the end of the buffer of the server in protocol format, which is the language used between the server and the client in the network communication. The flushing of the buffer will be determined by the setting append fsync, which can be always, that is the safest, but offers poor performance, or every sec, which is safe, but offers better performance and is the default one, and no, which is unsafe and will let the operating system decide when to flush, but offers the best performance. The setting will then be used by the flush append only file function that will write the contents of the buffer to the AOF file. Advantages It's durable. Since every change operation is appended to the file, it's unlikely to face data loss. It's reliable. Even if the log ends with a half-written command for some reason, let's say disk foe or other reasons, the disk check AOF2 is able to fix it easily. And it's flexible. Even if you trigger the flush all command, which will delete all keys from the database, as long as the file hasn't been rewritten, you can still stop Redis, edit the file, remove the command and restart your server. Now let's see the disadvantages. Disadvantages Size of the file AOF files are easily bigger than the equivalent RDB for the same dataset. Performance AOF can be not very performant depending on the F-Sync setting. Now let's put our hands in the fire and test each of those mechanisms. Alright, so now let's see how we can work with RDB. RDB is enabled by default. Unless you specify on the Redis configuration file a, a different setting, it will be enabled. Let me enter in the database here. I'm going to use Redis inside for that. There is nothing in my database, as you can see. And then if I come here and also do a ls data, you can see that there is nothing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the workbench. I'm going to run config get save to check for this configuration within the configuration file. By default, Redis have enabled the RDB persistence, right? And it will create a new snapshot every 10 minutes if at least one change has been done in the dataset, or every five minutes if at least 100 changes have been done in the dataset, or one minute if at least 10,000 changes have been done in the dataset. To overwrite this configuration, you can either edit your Redis configuration file or you can change it right here, right? So I'm going to do config set, save. So I'm going to change it to, to create a new snapshot every two minutes if at least one change has been done in the data set. But I'm not going to do it actually because otherwise we're not going to be able to see it live. I'm going to do it like every 10 seconds if at least one change has been done in the data set. Okay, let's check again for this one all right you can see that the new configuration has been set and if you wanted to actually turn it off you could also leave this string empty 
and then it wouldn't create automatic snapshots anymore. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new key, right? It's gonna be a simple key. I'm gonna call it Rafael and the value is my last name, who cares? My key has been added. So let's wait 10 seconds. I already refreshed it here so I can see my key here. And now if I come here and do LS again, we have an RDB file. But now let's check if it's actually working. I, I will stop my Docker container, which will also stop the Redis server. And I'm gonna start it again. Let's check the logs. And then you can see that it says database loaded from the disk. And if I come back here, I can actually see that I refresh the list of keys and my key is still here. So let's do a different experiment now. I'm gonna stop my Docker container again. I'm gonna delete the snapshot file and now I'm gonna start it again. And then you can see that there was nothing logged saying that the database was loaded from the disk. And if I refresh it here, there are no keys anymore. So let's talk about a few commands that Redis provides here. The first one is the save command. It's a synchronous save command and it will create a snapshot of all the data inside Redis. And according to the documentation, you almost never want to call the save command because the save command is going to run in the parent of Redis, while the background save command will actually fork your process into a parent and a child and the snapshot will be created in the child one. If for any reasons the fork command is not working as expected and you need to create a snapshot anyway, so just hit that button your Redis server will stop serving your clients while this is running, but at least you'll be able to create a snapshot of your data. So if I run the save command, you can see in the logs that the database was saved on the disk. And then if we do LS, you can see that we have the dump file here. But be aware that the save command will only return OK after the snapshot has been created. So while it's being created, your server will stop serving the clients because it's going to be creating this snapshot in the main process. But let's now say that you want to create a new snapshot, but don't, but you don't want to stop serving the clients, right? What you can do is trigger the background save command. And if I click on this, so you can see that differently from the save command, the background save command will return background saving started because it's running the background. It's not going to return when it's actually finished. And if you want to see when it's actually finished, you can then run the last save command, which will return the snapshot of our database. And if I run that again, it should return the same snapshot because it hasn't created a new snapshot since the last time, right? But let's run the background save again. And now let's run the last save again. And you can see that the timestamp has changed. Okay, so according to the documentation, the background save can actually return an error. And this will happen if there is another known background save process running at the same time. More specifically, an append only file will be right, which you're gonna be covering later in this video. That's it for the RDB. So now let's check the AOF, the append only file, which is a little bit more interesting. And in order to do it, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the server. Then I'm gonna delete the database file. I'm gonna edit the Redis configuration. I'm gonna come here and look for save, find all, all right. So I'm gonna uncomment this line so snapshots are not gonna be created by default. And I'm gonna look for append only, find all, okay, append only, and I'm gonna change this to yes, right? And then if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that the configuration is to every sec. So it's gonna append to the file every second. Let me close this. And now let's go back to the previous folder, local Redis. Let me remove the Redis conf file and copy it back here from my desktop. Nice, it's here. And now let's start the server again and let's check the configuration. Config get up and on. And you can see that it's enabled. And if I come here, let's go to data. Okay, we already have an append only file here. And if I open this, this is empty. So let's go back here. Let me refresh everything. And now let's create a new key. I'm gonna create a file and again, my last name. Let me add this key, it has been added. Now let's check the file again. So you can see that Redis appended all the commands that changed the data set into the append only file, right? So in this file, this stores the number of arguments of this command and the dollar sign is the size or the length of each command, right? So you can see that the first command has two arguments. The first argument has six bytes, and then the second one has one byte, which is only the zero number. And then you can see that the second command, you can see that it's saying that it has four arguments. The first one is set, which has a length of three. The second one is Rafael, which has a length of seven. 
The third one is the Leo, which has a length of 6, and the last one is NX, which has a length of 2. I don't know what NX means. Um, if you know, please let me know in the comments down below. So in our case, red is actually executed. Select 0 to select the database, and then set Rafael the Leo. That's what it did. Okay, let me refresh my keys here. All right, and then I'm going to add another key. I'm going to call it, it's also going to be a simple string. I'm going to call it second key and the value is going to be I'm second. Okay, now let's check the file again. And then you can see that this command has been appended to the file. And if I refresh the keys here, I have Rafael and second key, right? Let me change Rafael now. Let me edit this and change it to I'm first because it was the first key. Okay, let's check the file again. And now you can see that this change has also been logged to the file, right? As you can see here, set Rafael, I'm first. But then, as I said before, one of the disadvantages of the append-only file is that it can get very big. And then you can see that this operation here is not actually needed anymore to recreate the database because it has been overwritten by this one. But since it's an append-only file, Redis is not actually going to come here and delete this guy from here, which means that this file can get very big in the end of the day. So what we can do to mitigate this issue is we write this file. We can do that by running a command here, which is the bg rewrite aof. So background rewrite aof. So you can see that the rewriting started. You can check in the logs that it has already finished. You can see in the logs that it has already finished. And if we come back here and look for the file again, you see that it was rewritten. And what we have here now is actually a snapshot. And this is actually the AOF preamble that I talked about when I was talking about snapshots. And citing the documentation, when rewriting the AOF file, Redis is able to use an RDB preamble in the AOF file for faster rewrites and recoveries. And when this option is turned on, the rewritten AOF file is composed of two different stances, right? The first one is the RDB file and the second one is the AOF tail. So let's see the AOF tail being recreated again. So let's come back here. I'm going to add another key. It's going to be the third key. I'm going to call it third key. And the value is going to be I'm third, right? I'm going to add this key. And if I check this file again, you can see that we still have the RDB file in the beginning of the file, which is followed by the AOF tail, which are everything that is appended to this file. And one of the advantages of the append only file is that it's kind of flexible. So before you actually rewrote the file and created a snapshot in the beginning of it, you can actually come here and easily read all the commands that have been triggered by the server, right? And then if you do something by mistake, let's say that you come here and then you run flush all, which will delete all the keys and then come to the browser again to check all the keys and refresh them. You can see that they don't exist anymore. And then if I check the file, you can actually see that the commands are still here, right? So if you accidentally issue a command and then regret it, you can actually come here, edit this file, remove the command and the database will be able to restart in the previous state. So let's see if we can actually do it. I'm going to stop the server. Let's edit this file, delete this line. And now let's restart our database. So you can see that the data was loaded from the append only file. And if we come back here and refresh the list of keys, you can actually see all the keys back here, right? So you have Rafael, third key and second key. Okay. But on the other hand, I issue the flush all command and then I do a rewrite of the file then I'm done. I cannot come back here and add this file and remove the flush command. But be aware that Redis will also trigger this command automatically if the file gets too big. So if you run something that you regret later in the database, you better stop the server quickly, add the file and turn it on again. All right. So now that we have covered both AOF and RDB, which one should we actually use? Should I use AOF or RDB? If you want to have a degree of durability compared to PostgreSQL or order in disk databases, you should have both mechanisms of persistence turned on. AOF will make sure your data is durable and safe, while RDB will allow you to keep a smaller file and restart your database faster. However, it all depends on your use case. If you can tolerate a few minutes of data loss or if you can tolerate data loss at all, then you can either turn off AOF or both AOF and RDB. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. 
In my next videos, I will be diving more into Redis as I continue my journey, so don't forget to subscribe and to stay tuned on what's coming next. See you around.